Whenever I say I'm from the Indian Revenue Service, I get different reactions from across different continents. In Europe and America, they say terrific, fantastic, a woman in finance, so rare. In India, they give me a sly look. <laughs> and they seem to suggest that are you the cat that has tasted the cream? <laughs> when I got a spouse from the police department, the situation confounded. We were university toppers who chose to work with the government because we viewed that opportunity to be tremendous change makers as solution providers. But under one roof, we had two departments that every Indian loves to hate, income tax and the police. <laughs> I was holding my breath when Dr. Chalko was handling his passport story. <laughs> my father files his return of income every year online, and he gets his refund promptly at the end of 90 days, and he still thinks that it is a freak accident. The government has no process, has no efficiency, it just happens. That's not true. Why is it that we love to blame the government for all our woes? Why is it that we love to hate the bureaucrats? Why is the Sarkari Babu a pejorative and counterpoint for women like us who work in the government, is there a Sarkari babe? <laughs> I, head National Institute of, I head National Institute of Fashion Technology at Bengaluru. And when parents come to see me, as they walk into the room, they expect to see a man. They expect to see an old and a graying man. And then they expect to see a professor, or at least a doctorate holder. And then when they realize that, you know, this is a bureaucrat from the government of India heading the administration in NIFT Bengaluru, they just sit, they just collapse on the, on the, on the sofa. I offer them a glass of water, tea, and whatnot. <laughs> Across India, the consensus on what a government servant is, is a pan-Indian mental construct. We all assume, we all assume that they are inefficient, that they do not work, that they get more pay than what they deserve, and let me not even get into the perks bit. <laughs> they are inefficient and they get paid so much. Half of the mails that come to me on the NIFT Bengaluru ID is addressed as dear sir. This is let's say 90% of the mails. 5% are, are still ambiguous and say it as dear sir, oblique madam. And the other 5% do not even bother with the salutation. <laughs> and that is because it's a government institute. Why should we even be courteous to them? And there's a nice linear equation in India, wherein I pay taxes, and from the taxes, the government servants get their salary, so I pay the government servants. It's an A is equal to B is equal to C, and an A is equal to C linear mathematical equation. And so we have a sense of entitlement when we talk to the government officers, whether it be the security agents at the airport, whether it be officers whom you deal with, we abuse them, we traumatize them, we, um, we abuse them mentally, physically, emotionally. What not? We kidnap them. We attack their kids. We splash ink on their shirts and on their saris or what have you. And this is all part of it which has happened in Kerala, part of it in other parts of the country. I have lost two of my senior colleagues in the IRS. One was thrown into the furnace when he was on a raid to a factory. And the other, a pack of, you know, domesticated, a pack of um, hunting dogs were let loose on him when he was on a house visit for a raid. And this is unapologetically India and India's attitude towards the government. We love to hate all that is from the government and we love to hate the Sarkari Babu especially. What do we do to dispel? What do we do, what, what do we employees do to dispel this muddle, dispel this confusion, dispel this mental construct? And how do we, on every morning, choose to work in the government and triumph past these intimidations and rededicate ourselves to the constitutional ideals that we are committed to and that we are committed to promoting in this society of ours? And I go back to 2001, when I started my journey in the Indian Revenue Service. There is a shebang of foundation program in Masuri, and then the training at the Direct Taxes Institute at Nagpur, and I was posted as an assistant commissioner of income tax at Bangalore. 
handling the salary circle. And trust me, that was the age of manual refunds, where one check leave used to be issued to the SSE, one to the bank, and one to the zonal accounts officer. And there have been days when I have signed 1,000 odd check leaves on a single day. And what would keep me going? It would keep me going to think that I am facilitating the journey of a human being in this universe. How? I would look at the name, the PAN number, the age, and I would imagine myself a story wherein this refund would pay somebody's EMI. This refund would pay somebody's medical bill. This refund would be used by some parent to marry a child or to foot the education bill of you know, the, the child in question. And it would give me immense power. It would give me immense strength to plod on, to, to borrow Dr. Chaku's words, to plod on every day amidst the confusions, to take that quantum leap of faith to stay within the government. And the government also insists that you know all the citizens and all the stakeholders knows its officers intimately. I can assure you that of all the guest speakers, it would be far easy for any of you to look at my biodata up on the net. You give my name, you give my IRS, you give my civil list, and you will get even my LDL levels, Dr. Chako, it's out there for the public to see. <laughs> Property dealings, marital status, children, phone numbers, residential addresses, everything is so transparent. And yet, Yet, I mean, you know, the risks that we put ourselves to is never appreciated. After marriage, I was transferred and posted to Rajasthan, and I had the opportunity to work in places that I had never heard of till then. And I bet half the audience would not have either. One was Karoli, and the other was Savai Madhapur. And when I look back at the office of Savai Madhapur, it was a decrepit old house which was leased by the department, where there were five officers, three staff members, innumerable number of stray dogs, and colorful snakes that I have no idea what their names are, despite hailing from Kerala, the bowl of biodiversity. We would put our hands into uh, an almira to retrieve the file, and it would be another multicolored snake that we would get into our hands. The experiences were varied. From my home, I would travel every day 125 kilometers to reach my office, 30 kilometers by road, and then the next 80 to 90 by train. And this was on the Kota and the Delhi Highway. Sometimes battling heat of 50 plus above, considering that it is Rajasthan, and in winter, across lush fields of mustard, almost what you see in all the Bollywood movies, but not a man in sight, not a woman in sight, not an animal in sight. And that's precisely where, what the government does and where the government functions. Even if there is no profit in sight, even if there are no people to sell commodities to, we are there, we stick our necks out because we believe in the idea of India. We believe in engaging with that idea of India and we are part of the executive that ensures that each of these laws that the parliament passes is effectively administered and uniformly administered, whether it is in Kochi, in Bangalore, in Karoli, or in Jaipur. The income tax rate for all these places are the same. It doesn't change. And that, to a great extent, rests on the mantle of these executive or us bureaucrats. And my experiences also include sitting on train hours on end because of caste conflict, because of communal conflict, and we would be told not to step out of the house because there would be stone pelting, because there would be Molotov cocktails uh, thrown on. We would be asked to remove caste, particular caste staff away from the personal, the cooks and the orderlies, just so that they don't pose life threats anymore. I am the granddaughter of a priest. I was not part of the funeral of two of my grandparents. I have not seen the weddings of many of my cousins because at any given point of time, if I were to start from the remote place of posting in Rajasthan and come to Kerala, it would mean more than 48 hours. And even if I take all modes of transport. For the granddaughter of a priest, YouTube Holy Kurbana was the only solace for five years. And what is the salary that you would give me? What do you think is an appropriate amount that an IRS officer with all these travails deserve for displacement? Sure, one can argue that, you know, this is the life that we chose, this is the, next, this is the life that we all stuck our necks out for, 
And yes, I would do it all over again and again, because I believe in the idea of this country, in the idea of India. Into 14 years of my service, I decided to take a sabbatical, <clears throat> and I <clears throat> won a seat in Masters of Public Policy in the University of Oxford. And I have to rush to admit that it was not my <clears throat> Sarkari connections that won me a seat, but it was my academic merit. I passed out of St. Teresa's with, um, with the first rank in the university, with a record mark at that, and straight A's out of JNU as well. And you know, this apologetic defense that I give has been inbuilt in the past 20 years because we have to rush and say that it is not out of you know, backseat admissions or it's not out of um, you know, connections or phone calls that we manage to get things done. But we also have a mind of our own and some of us do think a little better than the rest of them. And when I went into Oxford, you know, we were 185 of us in the Masters of Public Policy class across 55 countries, and that was my aha moment. Whenever I would tell them the experiences as a public servant in India, whenever I would narrate my experiences as a public servant in India, <clears throat> they would always gasp as to how we would do it. Because every state, within every state itself, there is so much of a divergence in terms of caste, in terms of language, in terms of dialect, in terms of food, in terms of music, in terms of lifestyle practices, access to education, the, the land distribution pattern. As Nirupa said, you know, we are lucky that we are in Kerala. I have seen at close quarters child marriages. I have seen at close quarters widows being um, handled extremely badly. And that, that really forced me to rethink that, you know, what I do in the government of India is extremely important. And it changes the game for a lot of people because I am present there. And I finished my course with an internship at Kampala. Kampala, again, Uganda is one of the countries that won its independence in the late 50s, early 60s, if I'm not wrong. And there are a lot of countries in Africa which won its independence around the time that India did. And if you compare where we are today and where they are, you know, let me tell you the government has done a lot in these 70, 75 years. And this the government has been able to do because a lot of the brilliant and the best minds have chosen to join. And which you know, leads me to the topic that I chose for today as to why it is lit for each one of you to work with the government because we need the best and the brilliant minds seated in this audience to work in, work with, for the government. When I reached Kampala, somewhere, I mean, I toyed with the idea of resigning from service. I toyed with the idea of continuing for a default course in Oxford. I toyed with the idea of joining probably the World Bank or the IMF because I had many years of finance and experience behind me. But something moved, something changed. Each time that I would come to the airport, each time you know, I would come, I would land at Bangalore, each time I would land in, in, in Cochin uh, you know, airport, I would still think that, I mean, you know, this is my land, this is the country that I have to engage with. And my services and my presence in this chain is required here. Even if I'm not able to dispel the darkness, I'm going to be that one candle which shines brightly in government, upholding the ideals of integrity and whatever the Constitution has put down. A lot, of, a lot of people think that, you know, the life of a government servant is very, very rosy. But let me also tell you that it is just a colonial vestige that the Bada Sahib has orderlies and, you know, garden and hunting trips and lodges. For three years, I have not had a soap other than Life Boy in the district headquarters. <laughs> I have not had cooking oil other than mustard, unctuous amber whiskers, but it's just that I was not used to it. Bread? used to come with files from district headquarters. <laughs> so if you think that you know, all the government servants have a very, very cushy life, and that they are all paid more than what they deserve, I would request you to step back and rethink and just hold your tongue back next time. <laughs> Let me come to National Institute of Fashion Technology. We are not a model churning institute. 
right? We were started in the 1980s by a visionary called Pupul Jaikar, who worked with and who worked in the government creating multifarious institutions. We are an institution that joins the dots for fashion design, technology, and management. And we were started, and when we started, we had the active help of FIT New York. And our faculty, our students are all, I mean, you know, grappling with an interdisciplinary curriculum that jumps from design to technology to management. Can you believe it? This, comes, this makes me reach to the totally lit part of the government, which is innovation. We all have a picture of the government which is, which is conservative, which is risk averse, and which is also boring. No. You know, in the, 1947, in the 19, uh, late 1940s, when we won our independence, our balance of payment was really pathetic. We were grappling with poverty, with food crisis, with communal rights, partition wars, and whatnot. And here was a country whose dreams was not only to get, get food self-sufficiency, but also to ensure the establishment of institutes of technology, institutes of design, space research, things that nobody was thinking at that time at all, at least not a newly independent country. And that's where I want to stress that the government in these 70, 75 years has done far more than we give it credit for. Any of the cool things that you take today is, you know, resting itself on public funding and research. Internet has come out of defense research in the U.S. Wi-Fi rests on the path-breaking technological advancements made by Marconi, whose work was spotted by the chief electrical engineer of British Post. Again, a government organization. Touchscreen definitely has its origin in you know, public research, public funded research which happened in UK with the Weather Institute. What else can I think of? Many, many more. Many of the life-saving vaccines and medical research, Dr. Chaka would agree with me, have rested on government funding. The way Kerala stood up to contain Nipah virus, how can we forget the government effort that happened? Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage, when they worked on the computer, rested on UK government's funding. It's another matter that all three of them had differences of opinion, and none of them talked to each other at the end of it. But that's a different story. But whatever TED stands for, any idea worth spreading, government has been behind it. And that brings me to exhort each of the young person in this audience to take the quantum leap and to join the government because the negative narrative, the negative discourse is really harming us. We rest or we stand on the shoulders of giants and these giants who joined the government at the beginning of you know, the, the country's inception were, the, were really the brilliant and the best minds. And the negative discourse has ensured that we are now over-romanticizing anarchy and anti-establishment practices. The mediocre is you know, coming into the, the government. And third, we have lost faith in the system. And so, despite the confusion, despite the trepidations, and despite the intimidations, as I have taken my quantum leap to stay with the country and to work with the government of India, let us all join, join with the government and shatter a few stereotypes. Thank you so much.